Good morning, YouTubers. Today, I'm going to do a review of the Wenger Seaforce. But before I go into that, I'd like to give a quick history of the Wenger brand. Technically pronounced Wenger, the company dates back to the late 1800s. The company got its start in Switzerland in the canton of Jura. This region is overlooked by the Jura Mountains and famous for a number of watchmakers whose names are too many to list. The company's first line of products include industrial cutlery and butcher equipment. Technically known as Paul Bouchette and C, the company would become known as Wenger after Theodore Wenger, a minister who'd served in the U.S. military, returned to Switzerland and joined Paul Bouchette. They quickly worked to produce a new pocket knife supporting a government contract for the Swiss Army. This contract was split with the company Victorinox, thus beginning the long relationship with the company. For nearly 80 years, Victorinox and Wenger both produced Swiss Army knives. Wenger began production of watches in 1988, a year earlier than Victorinox. Things looked promising for both companies, but they were both hit hard in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks. New airline rules outlined the use of pocket knives, which were common among passengers. Eventually, this took its toll on Wenger, and the company was saved from bankruptcy only when Victorinox purchased them. Eventually, Victorinox became the sole producer of the Swiss Army knife, while, com while both companies continued to produce watches under separate names. While the Wenger brand is known for as an entry-level watch, that's not to say that they haven't produced their share of quality watches. Their most famous high-level watch is the GST Classic, which was a mechanical watch powered by the famous Valjou 7750 27-joule movement. This watch retailed for over 10,000 US dollars. The watch is extremely rare and came in at every conceivable complication you could imagine, to include moon phase, day date, and month, second time zone, and chronograph. Wenger is truly an underrated brand, and I really cannot emphasize this enough. They produce watches that range from 100 in today's US dollars all the way to 2000 for their high-end watches. Most of the watches I will review from this company will be in the sub-500 range. For the price point, you absolutely get a substantial value, and this watch is no exception. All right, the first thing you'll notice about this is that it comes in a nice, nice shipping box. It's surrounded by this paper cardboard cover with the logo on it. I'll move that to the side. It's a nice leather, leather box, and it's uh, stitched. Uh, it actually feels like it's leather. It doesn't really feel like it's uh, um, pleather, but... I don't think it's real. I'm personally not not a big fan of, of of boxes. I don't really care. I don't usually keep them. I usually throw them out, to be quite honest. Um, but this one's kind of nice, so it'll probably end up on eBay. Uh, you open it up, and you can see the, the the Wenger logo in the back, Swiss military. The watch itself sits in a little cushion uh, pillow, which a lot of companies are coming with. I'll take that out. Inside, you can see there's an instruction manual. Uh, and it goes over such things as the, the chronograph feature, and it's actually good for several different models of, of this watch. Um, but uh, it's, it's actually quite nice. So I'll move this stuff to the side. And this watch in particular, the Wenger Seaforce, it's a sort of a, a, an azure navy blue. Uh, I'm really happy with it. Um, it's, a, it's very, very good quality for the price point. And I'll go into some of the details, but first I'd like to show uh, a quick uh, video and discussion about uh, the movement itself. The Wenger Seaforce Chronograph uses the Ronda 5030.D movement. This is a 13 joule, very high quality rebuildable quartz movement. The non-chronograph version of the Seaforce uses a different movement than this one. There are technically two versions of this movement, a Swiss parts version and a Swiss made version. The Swiss parts version is typically used in the lower cost quartz watches and sold to other manufacturers such as Invicta and others. This version of the movement only has six jewels and comes in a plain steel finish. The higher end version of this movement is found in only Swiss watches and the movement is entirely built and assembled in Switzerland. This version is gold coated and comes with 13 jewels. It's worth mentioning that many people often don't know that higher end quartz watches also use jewels in their movement. This is something that's often typically reserved for mechanical watches. This movement uses a type 395 battery which produces 1.5 volts. 
The movement also has a hacking feature which allows the crown to be pulled to the second position, allowing for reduced power consumption. Typical battery life for this movement is 54 months. All right, let's get started. So right now I'm wearing these finger protectors, aptly named finger condoms, as you can guess. Um, they're used to help prevent fingerprints on the watches and when you're handling movements and, and things of such. So one of the first things you'll notice about the watch is the very nice face. It, it looks much higher quality than you would typically expect at this price point. The, uh, it's sort of a, a washboard, sort of uh, deck type look to it. Uh, the bezel is very high quality as well. It's not ceramic, but it's still nice. It's an anodized metal. And the pip at the top is, is also quite, um, quite it's, it's uh, proud of, of the rest of it. Um, there's non-numeric numerals for most of the hours, except for the 12 hour. Uh, you can see the three, three sub gauges that support the chronograph. You have the second hand, which is the sub second on the far right. And then you have the uh, 30 minute hand and then the hour counter for, uh, for the chronograph. So I'll go ahead and start that so you can kind of get an idea and that'll let that run in the background. What's nice about the watch is that it actually has a, um, it's a mineral crystal, but it has three layers of sapphire. So that, that helps prevent against scratching. It's actually really nice. The case itself is, I believe, a 44 millimeter, but we can, we can verify that right now. Forty-four point six, so it's actually quite good. It's a it's a nice nice size watch. Um, definitely would fit a uh, um, a normal sized adult male. Um, the case itself is it feels as if it's chiseled from a straight ingot of of stainless steel. It's actually really good. I can't remember the quality of stainless that uh, that this is made out of, but it's uh, it's pretty hefty. It, this probably weighs a good maybe pound or so. It's got sort of a brushed finish. It's it's very nice. Uh, I, I actually really like it. And the, the buttons, these are metal. They're not plastic. And it appears to be anodized metal. Red for start, black for stop. So it's very clear. Um, this is start, obviously. And then this is, the, uh, this is the stop and reset. It has the date on the sub dial right at the bottom there. Uh, of course, that will need to be reset since uh, for any months that don't go to 31. Uh, the... You can tell that the case back is screw on um, and it uh, it has been finished as well. It's actually quite nice and the laser etched lettering you can see it's a I forgot to mention too it this is a 200 meter diver. It doesn't say it on the front. Now the the non chronograph uh, Wenger Seaforce will actually show it says 200 meters 20 ATM. Uh, let's see what else can I mention about it. It has a screw down a crown. It's actually very nice. It has two gaskets, two O-ring gaskets in it, one in the back and then one on the shaft itself. So you can adjust the time. Oh, and see it just reset it because I disabled it. And I mentioned the hacking feature uh, previously uh, from, from the movement. So right now it's it's not moving. But when I put it in, uh, it should, now, now it's working. When you pull it out to the full, it, uh, it stops going. Now the only thing I don't like about this watch, uh, in, unfortunately, is is the bracelet now it looks very nice but what you'll find let's see if i can show it it's actually stamped uh it's stamped and rolled so i'm i'm not thrilled with that it really feels like a, a rock a tied to a string um, if i'm sort of exaggerating a bit that's unfortunate because it's a very nice watch and i've actually ordered a canvas strap which i've used before and and i really like so um I should be happy with that. Wenger also uh, sells these with a rubber strap, primarily for those who are going to be diving. Um, but if you do decide to get it, you can see um, it's it's a typical clasp. It's, it actually works kind of well. Um, I just don't like it. It just doesn't feel it just doesn't feel solid. If these were solid links, uh, it'd be a different story. But it just it. The, uh, the bracelet itself feels cheap, and it's unfortunate because the watch itself is very high quality. So I would recommend getting the one with the, with the rubber strap. Uh, even if you intended to replace it, the rubber strap one is generally a little bit cheaper. I got this one for $71. Normally retails for $39, uh, sorry, $395. But uh, I have to say this is a really good purchase. I really like this watch. 
and uh, I will not be selling this one. So if you have any questions, please click the comment below, uh, but feel free to, uh, to um, subscribe and uh, I will be posting more, more videos like this in the future. Thank you. But wait, there's more. I couldn't end this video without, without showing a, a, a loom shot. So I'll shut off the light and you'll be able to see it. And yes, this is a UV flashlight. Pretty cool. There you go. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.